A few years back, while working as a railroad conductor in the Canadian Rockies, I filmed something pretty epic. It was the morning after the first big snowfall of the season, and hundreds of trees had come down over the night. We waited for hours as crews tried to clear the tracks for us, but as more and more trains stacked up behind ours, uh, eventually the call came through. Just go. It was a wild trip. So naturally, uh, I filmed it. And when I uploaded the video to YouTube to share with a few friends, the wild ride continued. Eight million views on just my channel alone, countless reposts and shares, and thousands of questions and comments from people all over the world. So today I'm going to dive into the comment section and uh, try to address some of the comments and questions you guys have had over the years. Live Reeater, zero, zero, uh, excellent name. Live Reeater, liver eater. <laughs> liver eater, zero, zero. Is this the liver king? Mostly impressed with the windshield wipers holding up to the abuse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not alone. A lot of people got a kick out of those windshield wipers. And um, I'll say that I do recall wishing sometimes when it was really raining or snowing that we had you know, better windshield wipers. But there's no denying that they did stand up pretty well to all the uh, abuse that day. Little known fact, the windshield wipers on the front of the locomotive are powered by air. Mums Mushrooms Jody Foster says, uh, I'm wondering if that was a regular train or one specially intended to clear the track. Um, it was not a snowplow. A bunch of people um, kind of thought that. It was actually a string of empty grain cars, uh, like a two mile long train with a regular locomotive on the front. Just the regular cow catcher and the front of the locomotive is what was um, smashing through the snow and trees. Sci-Fi Guy says, at 137 it sounded like Sloth from The Goonies. Hi, hi sir. My, my, my name's Lawrence. So sometimes people call me Chunk. <laughs> Excellent ear, Sci-Fi Guy. Maybe it was. Stephen Wrigley says, there only has to be leaves on the line in the UK and all trains are canceled. <laughs> yeah, a lot of European comments that Germany, the UK saying that that's the case. I guess the thing in Canada is it's just such a big country and it's forest and mountains and wild stuff and you just can't keep uh, nature clean. These trains are heavy and there's not much that's gonna take them off the tracks. Jim Ritzheimer says, how in the world could somebody give this a thumbs down? Jim, I could not agree more with you. Thanks for the comment. Charles Lee says, are you supposed to plow into fallen trees like that? Wouldn't that damage the locomotive? Like the windshield wipers, review mirrors, or even derail the train? Uh, you bet, Charles Lee. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. But uh, we weren't going rogue here. Yeah, you really can't go rogue on the railroad. You can only uh, follow the rules. We were under direction to give her, and uh, give her we did. Kevin Otero says, you really gotta keep your eyes open, Jake. <laughs> uh, Frig, I like this comment, Kevin. It uh, brings me back oh, to no. this experience. Oh. <laughs> gotta keep your eyes oh, open, shit. Jake. And I will admit that I did close my eyes for a bunch of the trees, especially in the beginning. <laughs> and I think I even hid under the desk for a couple. Uh, the symbol project. Total axles, dot, dot, dot. Every foamer watching is still wa waiting for that count. <laughs> All miles, temperature minus one C. Total axles. Okay. 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 I appreciate you, symbol project. I, it was a silly joke, but I'm glad you are amused by it. Experimental fun. I gotta check this channel, it's kind of a cool name. Uh, it says, do all the trees push out of the way or is it actually running over and cutting them? This is a good question. The device that's on the front of the train, like the cow catcher, it's basically pushing everything off to the sides of the train. Except for any small branches that are under, you know, four inches high, um, they can slide under the cow catcher and they're easily chopped up by the wheels of the train. 
Henday97 says, I would think with all of the debris on the track, they would be required to run at restricted speed. Anyone know which railroad this is or location? Just curious. Hmm, Penday97, you're asking too many questions. You're making me feel suspicious and I will refuse to answer any of them. Da, 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 da. It's the, one the Arrow 1221 says, this looks like a fun job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty fun job, actually. I have nostalgia, thinking back. There's parts of it that aren't fun, you know, getting called at two in the morning, or three in the afternoon, or just after dinner to go for, a, uh, you know, a train trip that ends up being 24 hours, but all in all, it is really friggin' fun. Carson T says, there's no collateral damage in doing this to hoses, lights, handrails, paint, wipers. Uh, yeah, there, there was a bit of damage. Uh, <laughs> luckily, not too much, but uh, cow catcher was bent. The handrails smashed out a headlight and the cages around the headlight. But all in all, very little damage for how many trees we smashed. Holy Anton Stapura says, how do I get this job? Uh, just apply. Send a resume in, Anton. Uh, tell him Jake sent you. Anyway, I think uh, I'll, I'll cut it off here, but um, I have really enjoyed seeing all these comments rolling in every day. I get a kick out of reading them, and yeah, thanks a lot. Most of the videos I'm gonna put out on this channel aren't gonna be about railroading. They're gonna be about DIY building and remote freelancing and uh, the adventures that Emma and I are getting up to, but I am gonna put a couple more railroad stories up here uh, in the next month or so. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, take care.